Let me start this video off by first stating thank you to all of my amazing Patreon and Ko-fi donators. You are all extremely appreciated and your efforts and support are noticed. I give you all of my gratitude. If you haven't already donated and you do enjoy this video, please make sure to donate to my Patreon or Ko-fi and become a part of this team. You'll get a shout out and can even decide some of the ASMR in my videos. Your support is immensely appreciated and is used to help fund more of these videos. That's patreon.com forward slash Dr. John Deja Vu 1984. I repeat, that's patreon.com forward slash Dr. John Deja Vu 1984. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Shout out to Vin for this video idea. Greetings. Welcome to the Papagen's Driver's Education course. <laughs> oh my, you're quite a little prude, aren't you? I wonder if you'll even reach the pedals. <laughs> Don't worry, you will. And this big Papagen will help you. Now, let's cut to driving. Let's start with a manual with clutch. <laughs> right. Well, that engine's a little, a little big for this car, but what are subroofs for, right? <laughs> All right. Let me explain the parts of this car. This here's the dash. Get down. You have your vents and all sorts of cool gadgets to keep you and warm and at a good body temperature. Here we have your gauges. You can see them well. Tiny proof. But you can see your RPM, gear you're in, and how fast you're going. Not all cars will show that, but most, if not all, will show your speed. Miss is the steering. air conditioning, temperature, radio, etc. And here we have the shifter. So, in a manual, you have to shift gears. You can't just floor it and expect things to work out. There are pedals. In fact, why don't you come over here and sit in Daddy's lap? Oh show you. Okay, let me just move my feet out of the way. Okay, these are the pedals, my dear. So on the farthest left, way far left, it may not look like a pedal, but it technically is. It's, it's called the dead pedal. It's where you put your foot when you're not using the clutch. And to the right of it is the clutch. Now I'm going to use my special powers to make two of these pedals go down. There we go. You see those pedals? You do? Good. Well, the one on the left is the clutch. And the one on the right, that's the brakes. Now the clutch you need to use it while you're shifting. If you don't, you'll ruin the transmission. Propagin those best, honey. Right, and on the far right is the throttle. That's about it. Now why don't you get back up here and I'll explain the rest. Right, so what do those pedals even do? Well, the clutch, and let's start with the clutch, it disconnects the power from the transmission in the engine. The 
The reason this is good is, is so you don't transfer the inertia from the engine's power into the transmission's gears. I mean, if you have a dual clutch system, it do it automatically. And we'll get to those, my dear. But you need to press in the clutch so you can shift smoothly. You can do it without the clutch, but you'll harm the transmission, the shifting forks, and etc. Yeah. Now the dead pedal, some cars don't even have it. It's entirely null. It's just a reminder to keep your foot off the clutch when you don't need to, because you'll be essentially riding the transmission, or riding the clutch, rather, I mean. Now the brakes, it's pretty simple. Engages system, ABS on some cars, if it's going harsh enough to engage the calipers on the wheels and slow the car down. And an ABS system is good if, you know, you don't want to pump the brakes. You know, we are only so strong. <laughs> and the throttle, well, this one's pretty obvious and it's everyone's favorite. It's where you get more power. Give more power to the wheels get more power to the engine and therefore more power to the wheels as a result now this car is rear wheel drive so there's an engine in front but it drives power to the wheels in the back so how does it do that my dear hmm. well it's quite simple there's this thing called a drive line or a drive shaft, and it connects from the engine to the rear wheels. There's this little rotating cylinder, if you will, that is transferring from the engine's power from combustion inside of it, that rotates down a line all the way from the front to the back of the car and into the wheels and therefore it rotates another cylinder that is on the axles of the wheels in the back now I could go on and on talk about differentials and etc but the reason that's important is so you know that power has to be transferred from the front to the back some cars are front-wheel drive. They don't need a drive shaft. They just connect directly to the wheels in which it is in place. Right. So, let's get on to shifting. Right. Now, when you shift, you have a number of gears that are based upon a certain ratio given to match how much power the engine is giving to the wheels at a given moment. So you have first through sixth gears. And remember, when you're shifting, to always use the clutch. So press in on the clutch, and boom, you have your first gear. Press in on the clutch, second gear, press in on the clutch, Third gear, press in the clutch. Fourth gear, press in on the clutch. Fifth gear, press on the clutch. Sixth gear. Now, what about reverse and neutral? Now, it's currently in neutral, and the way we can tell that is when we're able to do this. It's always a good habit to move it around in this state so you can be absolutely certain you're in neutral and not in gear. Now, to put it in reverse, push down on it, and bring it all the way back to the right, where sixth gear would be. Let's put it back in neutral. So what are the purposes of the gears? car doesn't have much RPM, it needs to be in a lower gear, just so it can help the wheels move more efficiently. We put it in first gear, for instance, 
and the car is just rolling off. Now, why would we want it in neutral? Because this is a manual, we don't have a park that can lock the wheels in place. So what we do is we put it in neutral, and we lift the handbrake. Now, when you do that, the car won't move. It's essentially the equivalent of a park. Um, I'm not entirely sure if some manuals do indeed have a park, but if they do, I, it's good, because you wouldn't have to do this process. Because putting the car in neutral, the wheels will still move. You just won't transfer any power from the engine to the wheels. So put it in neutral, it could coast. And that's why you have to be very wary of it. Especially with manuals. You gotta make sure you check your brakes. At least once every... Mm, I'd say half a year if it's an older car, maybe more often. Because you need to lift that handbrake. You need to make sure the car's not going anywhere. Because if it does, that is bad news. Mm. Right. So, what else should I tell you? I think that's about it. You know, you learn best from seeing me drive, so why don't we do that? Now, as I drive, I'll explain more about the gears and how they work. So, yeah, let's make sure it's in neutral. Now, to start the car, you're going to want to press in on the clutch and the brakes, just to be safe, because if you left it in gear, it'll lift off, and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to press on the clutch and the brakes. There we go. Now the car is starting. It's currently in neutral, so I could let off the clutch and nothing happens. If I did that in gear, it would stall. If this... So, this car is fuel-injected. I don't have to give it any revs to keep it alive, even in neutral. If it was carbureted, it's better to give it some revs like that. Just to make sure it doesn't stall. Now, if I put it in gear, clutch is still in, right? It's not going to die. You can give it revs, and it'll be fine. But if I let off the clutch, the car dies. Or the engine stalls, right? I'm going to press on the clutch, keep it in the brake as well. Because it's in gear. Now, you normally don't want to start it in gear. It's just a bad idea, because like I said, you can get lift off, and you don't want that. Or the engine will just stall, and you didn't know. Right, so it's in gear. Now, in order to get off with this car, if it's going to stall when we let off the clutch, we need to give it some revs. Now, you want to find a good amount of revs. You don't want to give it too many, but you don't want to give it too little. If you give it too many revs and you let off the clutch, you'll get some wheel spin. It'll look badass and cool. But only Daddy Jin's allowed to do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just a bad idea because you'll lift off and have no idea. You could lose control, etc. Now, if you don't put too many RPMs, you'll likely kill the engine, you know, stall it again, and you won't get anywhere. But, anyways, yeah, let's give it some revs. You want to find a good place. That sounds good. Right there, around two to 3,000 RPM on this car. It's pretty heavy. Now, once you find that area, you want to let off the clutch slowly. If you let off too quickly, you'll get wheel spin, or if you let off too slow, you risk stalling the engine. You just want to let off it just at a decent speed. 
and you don't want to do it every time you shift. Every time you shift, like, give it a... Give it some time, but also don't just punch it and expect it to shift as well. But once you're getting off, always let off slowly. So right there, that sounds good. Really? it on the clutch and shift into second gear. Now I can give it more RPMs without hurting the engine. Now we're going up decent speed, so let's go into third. Believe it or not, you can actually shift preemptively. Yeah, it's, it's the neat thing you can do. Now we'll shift again to fourth. Remember, clutch in. Shift again. And into six. Now you want to make sure once the RPM gets low, you want to shift back down. Because if you, well, if you leave it, it'll the engine could stall, and that's bad news even while it's driving. So here we'll I'm gonna put it into neutral. Put it into fifth there. Around this corner. There is snow out, so you want to be very cautious, very slow around corners, especially in rear-wheel drive. It doesn't have any traction. Well, it still has traction, just it's more likely to spin out as opposed to a front-wheel drive car or an all-wheel drive. Okay. I hope this isn't too complicated for you. And don't worry, I'll be here to help you, okay? This Papa Jim's got you. I'll make sure you learn. Okay, we'll shift it to sixth. Don't be afraid to use the brakes. Just don't slam on them. Because if the car doesn't have ABS, the brakes will lock. And you risk just going forward anyways. Okay, we're approaching a corner here. So I'm going to slow down. And shift down into third gear. It's a nice snowy day, so it's okay to do that. We'll shift back up because I don't want to rip the car too much. This is a sports car, but this big Papagen knows best, so. into a corner, you enter it slowly. Then as you're entering out, you get more and more power. Well, I accidentally opened my door. Now that you don't want to do. <laughs> Silly. car here. It's okay. This Papa Jen will teach you everything. Shifting is a little wonky. You want to make sure you check up on your cars. Make sure the transmission's good, the shifting's good, and even the doors. I mean, you saw what happened there. Might have to report to the company about this one. That's absolutely no good. That's a no bueno. Alright, as we're approaching here, I'll put 
put it in neutral because we'll coast. And we'll pull over here. Slow down. Perfect. Put on the clutch. You don't have to when you turn the car off, but you're there. Perfect. Now, how say you we go drive one of the automatics? It's a bit less complicated. No need to shift if it's too complicated for you, but I love shifting. Manual cars are the best. You can control your gears, but let's learn about the automatics anyway. It's good to know about them. All right, here's a automatic. This one has paddle shifters, but I'm not going to use them. We'll actually get to those later. Yeah, but unlike the manual, this one shifts automatically, as you'd expect. There are some cars that are called semi-automatics. I think it's an unofficial term, but basically you can shift into gears with the dual clutch system without having to press on any clutch into a gear you want with the automatic transmission. Now, it's not good for the transmission, but you can do it anyway. But, yeah, for the most part, they're just automatic right here. Now, here we can put it in park or neutral. I'll keep it in neutral with the handbrake before we start it. And these ones aren't too complicated, as you'd expect. It has a dual clutch system, which uses dual clutch and shifts automatically with a program at a certain RPM. If the RPM gets too high, it shifts up. If it gets too low, it shifts down. That's just how it works. And that's what makes automatic transmissions typically more expensive than manuals. So, maybe more reason to buy a manual. But you have to be skilled to use one. Automatic transmissions are harder to fix with those computer parts as a result. It's hard to exactly calculate when the cars shift, etc. etc. But even the concept behind automatic transmissions isn't too complex. They're quite, quite simple, quite simple. In a in a sort of abstract sense, not exactly like they're simpler than manual transmissions, no, but simple in a way, <laughs> simple that like, oh, they should not matter, like that right here. Now, when we start these cars, the most you want to do is just keep your foot on the brake. All right, so foot on the brake, and Normally you would have a key, but this is a very modern car, I've noticed. There's actually a button. You would just bring a key fob to unlock the car and press a button. Yeah, it's weird, I know. Personally, this Papa Jin doesn't like it. <laughs> I like to have a key, just so you know you're the one who can open the car. Key fobs, it's too technological, but that's our modern day and age. They're pretty effective in itself, I admire. But, yeah, foot on the brake. And the car is started. Now, we can put it in park or reverse, but we want it in drive. Now, keep your foot on the brake. Because it's an automatic, it uses mm, potential energy to just keep the car moving forward and it's 
a good thing. It's effective, and you can give it more power if you'd like. But if I let off, and it'll immediately start going. I can give it some revs. Yeah. Don't worry. This Papagen's got you. Let's actually do a U-turn. Some cars have an indicator where the center of the wheel is if you lose track. But this daddy gen smart, you can feel when the steering's in the right position. Yeah, that's pretty simple. You'll hear the RPM get pretty high, but look, it just shifts. There are actually some automatics that have set gears or technically an infinite gear ratio they're called cvts and i say technically because in all perspective they really don't it's just they have this you might want to have to do research on it because even papagen doesn't know that much about it <laughs> but from what i remember it uses the same concept potential energy and inertia transfers it to a coil of some sort that technically has one gear yeah it's pretty interesting we can actually even talk about electric cars they use a similar thing they don't really have gears they only have technically one and just run off that they don't really need gears because they don't have an engine. They just use a battery. Yeah, electric cars are quite interesting themselves. But, <laughs> uh, maybe I just prefer the old fashioned. Like the engines, can't go wrong with them. I did talk about paddle shifters. They are quite useful. And it's why I brought up semi automatics because you know, let's, be, let's be slow at this corner. Better safe than sorry. But I brought up semi automatics because you can shift. You can shift into first, second, or third if you need to. If you're hauling a trailer or another car, you might need to keep it in gear, keep continuously giving that power. Maybe you're going uphill, you need to get more power, and you don't want the transmission to just shift on you. You want it to be set. But paddle shifters are different in that you have to press on them to shift up or shift down. Shift up for the right paddle shifter, and shift down with the left paddle shifter. They're on the sides of the wheel, and you can tap them with your finger. Quite simple. Quite simple, this system. Don't need to use a clutch at all. Just press on them. Some race cars, I think, might have clutch system paddle shifters, but it's entirely purposeless if you can just, you know, shift with a dual clutch. Maybe I'll use them on the supercar, the vet, the Corvette. <laughs> oh, you like supercars too? Didn't think Daddy had those, huh? Don't worry. Big Papagen Driver's Ed course, you'll see all of them. But we'll get to those after we talk about four wheel and all wheel drive cars. Yeah, it's 
just because I want you to learn. I, I really think it's valuable information you know about these cars. Uh, so that if you ever have to drive them, you know what to do. All right. Let's pull over. So that, my dear, is automatics. Now, we don't have to put it in neutral and... Oh, I accidentally turned it off. We don't have to put it in neutral and pull the handbrake. We could just put it in park. Simple as that. I can let go of the brakes and the wheels lock. All right. How about we see a truck, huh? A car that's actually big enough for Papa Jim, huh? All right. Ah. <sighs> Now that's much better. Finally. A car, or a truck rather, that fits this bunch. Now, if I can be honest with you, I don't really like trucks. Yeah, I prefer economy cars. That's just me. You find a car that can get you good mileage, you'll save a lot. These trucks are some real good gas guzzlers. But, hey, comfy. Should install sunroof still. My ears are still grazing on top of this. <laughs> but yeah. So, why do I want to teach you about four wheelers? Or even all wheel drive cars? Now, every four wheel drive car is technically considered an all-wheel drive car. But what's the difference? Well, you have control over f all four of your wheels. Now, there's not a shifter on this one for it, but there's a low and a high gear. When you're going uphill, you want to shift into the low gear ratio. There's just a shifter on the transmission. Yes, two shifters. One for your gears to shift in and out of, whether you have a clutch or not. Like, I've never heard of a dual clutch, but yeah, I'm surprised this one doesn't have it for low and high gears on your car, near your truck or four-wheeler. But that isn't exactly what makes it that. It's that you can control your wheels, like I said. Now, there should be a button here somewhere. It's there, but we'll just keep it on equal power for now, where we can choose to engage to have the engine power just the back two wheels, the, just the front two wheels, or all four wheels. And no, we can't pick and choose. I, I think on some you can do that, but <laughs> not this one. choose to give more power to the front or back wheels but you can also still have like the wheels active and considerably those are more found on certain all-wheel drive cars but they're also on four-wheel drive cars all right let's get this show on the road or rather the off-road after all where we're going we won't need roads if you get that reference. Because we are going to go off-roading with this one. It has a good suspension and might as well. Alright, we want to make sure we get this big hook and truck out in one piece. We'll get on the road. Let's find a good off-road area. All right. Don't worry. This Bob Jim knows what he's doing. I'll go slow on the off-road. I just want to demonstrate how good the suspension is. 
That's why this car can go off-roading way better than the other ones. on the brakes there. Didn't mean that. Alright. Let's go run a movie. Had our fun. Maybe we went pretty high up this mountain. No. Effort at all. We want to be careful as we're going down. I know it's much easier, but <laughs> we also don't want to gain too much inertia. We crash. It's always good to use the brakes. Don't ever be afraid of using the brakes. <laughs> Practically rally racing with this thing. <laughs> don't be like Papa Jim. Just drive on the roads. If you do get off-road, Take note of those four-wheel drive capabilities. Because you never know. If you need to climb more, you might need to get more power to the front wheels. And vice versa. All right. Perfect. Put it in park. And... Where was it? Ignition's right there. Perfect. All right. Now, how about we try some supercars? <laughs> Perfect. All right. I won't let you drive this one yet, but maybe at some point I'll let you. For now, you just got to get good at driving. Allow me to just show you how. Now, anyway, we are at the supercar. It's a blue Stingray Corvette. 2023, I believe. No, I am not sponsored. That is just the name of the car, simply. Now, it has paddle shifters. I still won't use them, but again, you can shift up and shift down with them. There is a mode to engage that, so if you do have an engage, make sure that you shift. Because you will give it a high RPM and will wonder why it's not shifting automatically. You probably engage manual mode. You need to shift. And you most likely engage it with the paddle shifters. It's okay. That's what this shifter's for. All right. Let's do one more lap with this car. The supercar. And then we'll... We'll have you sit in my lap and I teach you how to drive. See what you've learned. Sound good? Good. All right. The starter is right here. Okay, let's put it in drive. Let's give this thing a spin. Like I said, Papa Jen is much too big for this car. That's okay. This Papa Jen's got you. Shh, 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 shh. This Papa Jen's got you. You're safe with me. Slow into the corner. 
corners fast out. Don't go too fast or you'll get wheel spin. This is a rear wheel drive supercar. It can spin out too. What's the difference between a supercar and a hypercar, you ask? Well, supercar is more civilian branded. People like us can own it. Maybe Papa Jin can use his military citizen benefits to get his hands on a hypercar. <laughs> if he wanted. You know, if, if I wanted, I could probably do that. But hypercars are way, way faster. They're like race, racing cars. They could be used in F1, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, because they max out at 200 to 300 miles per hour. That's absolutely insane. This one can max out at 200, or I think 180. I don't remember. Pretty fast, nonetheless. Zero to 60, in, what about three seconds? And about the same, if not less, for hypercars. They are called hypercars for a reason. Yeah, as you can see, it's the same deal. Don't worry, this Papa Jen's got you. I'll teach you how to drive every one of these cars. Which pedal to press, at what time, and I'll be calm with you. I'll make sure you don't get hurt with my absolute <laughs> big muscles. Yeah, yeah. This big primogen daddy has some big muscles. And, well, I can use them. Make sure pump the brakes if needed or help you shift whatever you need right? and we can start with you in my lap or whichever you prefer and then after a while maybe you do it on your own and I send the passenger then we'll know for sure that you are fit to drive all right. Brilliant. All right. Shall we start with the manual again? <laughs> Don't worry. No, you got this. Again, if you enjoyed this video, consider donating to my Patreon or Ko-fi. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps fund more of these videos. Plus, you get a shout out and can even request more ASMR. Thank you. In any case, like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy your sleep.